In this video, I'm showing some improvements I've made to some components of the steering block. I've made changes to these three components. To the base part, I had a small track below the pin of the swing arm to prevent the swing arm from slipping out of the spiral when it reaches the end of the spiral. That happened to me occasionally when the force feedback push the motor too hard. It also features a more solid support for the sensor and one alignment slot to ensure the correct positioning of the sensor. The steering spiral has a slightly different dimension, making the swing arm travel 1mm less, avoiding the edge of the sensing range and improving the smoothness of the reading at the edges. It also features a rotational limiter accessible from the top side so the player can physically reduce the 900 degrees to 360. The steering face base was also improved to allow me to insert the magnets post print using a little screwable cover to keep them secure. And to screw them tight, a new tool is needed. I start by disassembling the old block to replace the base. Mounting everything together is very similar to the previous version, with a slight difference in the installation of the sensor. This is placed the same way as before, but the sensor legs need to pass inside this slot. If the sensor was soldered using the tool, the dimension should be correct and fit properly. This time, tape is needed, the support base is a bit lower and the top part should firmly secure the board now, even if it was over sanded. As you can see, the sensor is secure and in the expected place and position. The swing arm should ride on top of the track without getting stuck, but the printer might leave some roughness on the surface. I sand it a bit just to clean any imperfections and ensure the movement is continuously smooth. Notice the swing arm no longer goes to the center of the base because it is touching the tabs that align the sensor. The new spiral is needed here, not only to improve the readings, that was the main goal of the redesign, but also to avoid breaking these tabs. The extra space provided by the shorter movement allow me to add the tabs. So, if I use the old spiral, these tabs might break or the reading will be very wrong at the edges. This new spiral features these two holes that go from top to the spiral. The first step is to remove all the supports, but I need to be extra careful not to damage the inner wall of the spiral. I've changed some settings in the printer and these supports are quite difficult to remove. It is possible to push them from the other side through the holes, but once again, I can only apply force in the direction of the outside of the spiral. I cannot touch the inside and I cannot push to the inside because the inside wall is what the swing arm uses to read the position and if it's not smooth, the reading will be inaccurate. I also cleaned the holes with a 3mm drill, still pushing to the outside, but just to make sure the holes are at least 3mm in diameter. On the top side, I'm cleaning the extra plastic from the supports because this tiny part will need to be placed here and be flushed with the surface, or else the steering face will not sit well.
Once everything is cleaned, I insert the locking pins and assemble the block normally. This first time I screw everything together, I tighten a bit more just to compress the plastic where the supports were, to ensure the screw is flush or below the surface of the spiral, but flush is better. Then I remove some pressure until the spiral rotates from one end to the other in one go, but without leaving gaps along the axis. So, how does new feature work? This will limit the rotational movement of the steering wheel from 900 degrees to 360, impeding the swing arm rotation with two 3mm rod segments. For the limiter and the new tool, I need 3mm rods with 17mm in length. Two of them will be used with the limiter component and the other two will be used in the tool that will screw the cover of the magnet in the steering wheel, but more on that later. To assemble the limiter, I just need to press fit the rods until they are fully inserted into the tool. To use it is very simple. With the steering centered, I place the limiter into the holes and they block the movement of the swing arm. This limiter sets the rotation to 360 degrees and I can now play with an F1 car in Assetto Corsa, for example, without overshooting the steering angle. To avoid losing the part, the slot accommodates the limiter sideways, securing it below the steering face. After lubricating the new spiral and the track below the swing arm, I have everything ready to mount the block into the case again. Before closing the case, I'm assuring the top port is properly connected and functioning by connecting it to the computer and see if it lights up. I need to calibrate the steering again since I changed the rotation angle relation with the sensor, but as before, the calibration should last a very long time. In this new steering face version, the magnet is inserted into the magnet cover. Then, the magnet cover is placed on the steering face and screwed in. But to tighten it up really well, I need this new tool that requires two rods and a magnet. The magnet used in the tool functions as a holder and an aligner. It keeps everything attached and all the steering faces with the same magnetic polarity. The first step is to place the magnet with a compass or the reference red and blue magnet, I find the south pole of the magnet and I attach a countersunk screw to the south pole. Then I place the magnet in the tool with the screw facing outwards and press fit the magnet to the end of the hole. On the other side, I also press fit the rods until they are fully inserted. The tool is ready. And to insert a magnet into the cover, I place the cover in the tool with the magnet slot facing out. Then I pick up the magnet magnetically, allowing it to rotate and orientate by itself. And then I just press fit it. This might be possible to do by hand, depending on your printer's tolerances. The cover is ready, 
I align this little mark with the small older cavity on the left and tighten it until the cover is flushed and the little mark passes the center holder cavity. That's it, the steering is ready to use. If the cover is tight, it is impossible to remove it without tooling. So keep the tool away from little children to avoid them to remove the magnets. There's also the possibility of using glue to cement both parts together permanently, but I don't find that really necessary since it's already hard to tighten the cover in. With the magnets in the tool, assuring all the steering faces have the same polarity, it is easy to stack them together and keep the center screw polarized in the same direction. Now let's finish the assembly and play some games to test it out. All these new parts are already available and you can download them in the link below. So, at this point, thank you for watching, like, share and subscribe, and I hope to have you in the future. Music